Welcome to iHeart 3D Printing again. And this is gonna be a shorter video. It's a, a video about diagnosing yellow basil. Well, not even yellow basil, just iron deficiency in, in basil. The simplest thing you could do, I've watched a zillion videos on this. When your basil starts turning yellow and it starts at the new growth and starts to work its way down, I have plants in the back, in the front yard um, that are turned yellow. I got my hydroponic basil. I 3D printed a, a, a fixtures for this. Did this whole thing and my basil kept turning yellow, tried different solutions. And there's a lot of people on YouTube who talk about iron deficiency and yellow basil and there's so much stuff. Nobody's really hitting, I like actionable information. Actionable information meaning here's a problem, this is exactly what you can do or close enough to where you can tailor a solution to it. When I read stuff like your basil's turning yellow, you're overwatering. You know, it's just, it's like you go have an uh, illness and the answer is go get medical attention. It's not, it's not, it's not something you could do right now. Um, so I like actionable intel. I figured it out and I'm going to tell you, it's so simple. I wish people would just em put emphasis more on things that are important. We kind of do things in these videos where it's a list of things and then you don't know which one's the most important. So let's begin. Okay, so you got basil. You got fertilizer, you know, you, you did all the stuff right, your basil's growing and suddenly it starts turning yellow right here in the new growth, right there in the new growth. I will, I'll put some B-roll so it makes sense. You know, you're gonna, you're gonna read a lot of stuff and some people include the solution in, in their list, but it's not emphasized. And I'm gonna say that this, this solution should be the number one thing every single person does when you're trying to do hydroponic or soil-based growing of plants that are not native to your front yard or whatever. Um, it's real simple. The iron deficiency comes from a P, the pH being too high. And if you go online, you see people saying basal pH should be 5.5 to 6.5. It's BS. The 6.5 is already too high. The ingredients in a lot of fertilizers use a, a iron called EDTA. At 6.3 pH, your basil is not going to be able to consume that uh, EDTA iron. So it doesn't matter how much you throw in, it's probably not the issue since your fertilizers often contain a DTPA or EDTPA. DDT, I'll put the text in the, in the, in the screen, has uh, availability up to 7.0, but I wouldn't trust that those numbers for pH. I would just stick to 5.5 pH, maybe even 5.0, because as a plant grows, it's going to consume some of those nutrients uh, as it uptakes the, P, the nutrients, it shoots back electrons or atoms or whatever into the water that raises the pH. So it's constantly bringing itself out of the range it can consume the iron. When the pH is too high, it starts consuming calcium instead of iron and then you get that yellow uh, look and your growth starts to slow down and all this stuff. There's a, a billion solutions. All, all leaves turn yellow for all kinds of reasons. There's like charts of like 10 different reasons, but for basil, you're probably gonna run into a lot of yellowing when you're trying to learn this, and you're gonna do everything, and you're gonna run the gamut, and you'll even get the pH down, and it works, and it doesn't work, and you you know, you know, go and get lamps, and I was using lamps, I was using uh, really strong lamps, and it will green it up, even with an iron deficiency, but it, stops, it still won't grow, which is weird. So it's almost like you need way more light when you have an iron deficiency just to get it green, um, let alone get it growing, but you're growing basil, right? You're in your yard or whatever. You got to get the, you got to get a pH meter. There's no way around this. And I tried to go around this. You know, I, I put vinegar in the water. Well, what you don't know is that a few drops of vinegar shoot your water to an acid level, and then my roots like literally rotted off the plants. So I've been trying this for about, I want to say, 60 days, 90 days. Already killed some plants. Already, you know did a lot of trial and error. You can't really do this without a pH meter. Um, you're gonna run into something called buffering. Uh, I'm using reverse osmosis water. So like one or two drops of pH down or vinegar, one or two drops of pH down or vinegar puts it into a really acidic level. And that's fine, you'll hit your numbers, but it's gonna start rising out of that range really fast and you'll be right back into an iron situation. So you can use pH down first and then add pH up and you kind of have both ends of the clamp. So I call it clamping down the pH. It's nothing you've ever heard of on any of these channels, but people do use high pH water out of the tap and then use pH down and it kind of gives that clamp where it's not so easy. Just think of grades in um, your, your class. If you have 10 A's and 10 F's, then you get a C, right? But what if you have one A and one F and you still have a C, but then the next grade you get another F, now you got like a deep minus. So 
think of averages and when you put it in that frame, having both a, a higher pH buffer and a, a high low pH buffer together kind of clamps in and then you can dial it in to that, that range. Don't use too much of either one, you know, kind of be creative about it. If you're having problems and you're getting your pH down and it's working for a while and then suddenly your pH shoots right back up outside of the range, we're going back into the, the pH buffering, just buffer a little bit, use some tap water. Um, some things not to use. This has iron in it. This, this material has iron, this fertilizer. Um, and I tried using it as a plant food and it will work for about one or two days but it has something in it called 12% urea nitrogen. I don't know what that is. Urea sounds like urine to me. So my wife, she turned the vacuum on. Turn the vacuum on, we never vacuum. And then she turns the vacuum on while I'm making a video. It's just classic. Well, we'll see if this thing, this road, Mike's worth it. So yeah, this urea nitrogen, whatever this stuff is, it starts smelling like an aquarium that has went bad. So don't use it. I'm not a fan of this. It's easier to use, easier to use. It claims it has iron, but it doesn't have a number of how much iron's in it. And it's kind of hard to find that information. And for the price and the amount of fertilizer it comes with, it's kind of kind of an expensive product. I switched to this. I'm probably in day four or five on some of these plants. My little plants are growing like crazy. And it has an iron content, chelated iron. And it says it uses somewhere I saw DT, the better kind of iron. So there's EDTA and DPTA. Just maybe you start off with this if you're gonna do hydroponics. A lot of people tell you to start off with this. It's because it's easier, but I don't think it's easier enough to deal with the price. It's not really easy. I mean, what's easier, you know? Like, easy's relative. It's maybe a fraction atom more effort to go use the Maxigro. Okay, this I got at Home Depot. It actually worked, but it's got the EDTA, the one that stops working at 6.3 pH. It has yucca extract because it's supposed to be a foliage. You make mix it up and put it in a sprayer and spray your leaves and those will turn them green. But um, I like, I'm doing hydroponics, right? So I want to put it in the water and just walk away. The one thing I found with this stuff is it stains the roots and it turns the water, like if you shake it up, you know, you're changing pH, you're doing your thing, it makes the water kind of foamy and I'm assuming that's the yucca extract. All right, guys. One last thing, when you have a pH that's rising rapidly, okay, your pH is going up, at a certain number, the irons that are included in these fertilizers actually come out of the water and turn into an actual metal, uh, turn into like a rust or whatever. You don't want to have a pH that's risen so high that this is actually like a chemistry experiment where you're they're spraying the water and like the metal's coming out, like the gold's coming out of the stuff when you watch some of these YouTube videos. You don't want to have a, such a high pH, let it go, where the iron actually precipitates out of the, the water. People say 5.5 to 6.5. I'm gonna say 5.0 to 5.5. I've been having, when you get the pH right, right? Let's say you have an iron deficiency and you don't even add nothing and you get the pH right, you start greening up in a one or two days. It's pretty fast. I mean, and on a bright sunny day, it almost seems like the same day. If you have a cloudy day, you'll start getting yelling on a new growth. Even if everything's right, just because it was a cloudy day, you had some growth, but that new growth wasn't green because um, the sun hasn't hit it. And don't worry about that. that, that will come out. So hopefully I've nailed the point home. If, it, if there's one takeaway of watching this video that you gleaned from it, it's get the pH right and maintain it. Get the pH where it's supposed to be and just maintain it. And it might be harder, it might be some trial and error. You're not gonna be able to do it without a pH meter. You're gonna need some pH up and pH down. I, I was using vinegar and baking soda and there's trade-offs. I mean, obviously you get vinegar out of your, you know, your kitchen cabinet, but it might not be the best thing. And I feel like it kind of just gets out of the water. It hel helps the pH rise again when the plant consumes the nutrients. So without going into too much detail, just get the pH up, pH down. Don't use baking soda. I find it does something to the water after a while. I don't know what that is. Hopefully you guys start growing some green basil. Thanks a lot. I'll like and subscribe. Help me feed my family. I want to monetize this channel. And uh, these are 3D printed. Pretty cool pattern right there. 3D printed net cups. Optimized. I'm still testing them so they could suck. But so far, this plant was the same size. This plant was the same size as this plant about three weeks ago. And this is my first, it's, it's glued in there because I keep pulling it out. Um, I'm a checker, so I like to check things like hourly. I'm obsessive. All right, guys, enough rambling. Like, subscribe, help me monetize this channel. 
look forward to a, a little basil video. I mean, things are changing in, in, in the world. Um, the sooner we can start using this technology we've been building up over the, the generations, you know, we've been building up technology and we really don't use it right. 3D printing is one of those technologies, it has a lot of uses, but people are not using it to me to its maximum, max benefit, meaning I'm growing basil plants that can resell for up to three or four bucks using a few cents of uh, PLA and uh, paint bucket. So like, subscribe. I'll see you guys on the flip side. Take care. Hey there guys, this is a post editing uh, follow up. So here's a basil, a good example of yellow. Now this is not from iron deficiency. This is because it's been cloudy for the last few days. Um, so it, the new growth hasn't got a chance to green up. But if you have a plant that looks like this, right? They look like this and you're having sunny days and it's still, still after the sunny days has that look and then you kind of see the the yellowing start to spread downwards, like the whole plant's kind of turning this lime green, that's an iron deficiency. Thanks a lot and have a great day.